Hi, it's Eliana. So I was recently sent a, a video of Barbara Mersiniak's talk, which she was doing in Arizona. And in this talk, Barbara was channeling the Pleiadians, the Pleiadian Collective that she is connected to. And they said that there are groups of Anunnaki who are influencing human beings, that it could be done celestially, it could be done cosmologically, and that these Anunnaki have been around for thousands of years. What the Pleiadians said that the Anunnaki infrastructure is hidden that it has been hidden for thousands of years after they left Earth. So I was curious to see this intel myself, to have a look at it. So I went and did a remote viewing of Pluto because uh, the Pleiadians said there's a base, there's an Anunnaki base on Pluto, and that the Anunnaki's have satellites of their own not just what SpaceX puts out, NASA, and all the other human-based space programs. Anunnaki have their own satellites that can monitor the frequencies of human beings, that can monitor ET traffic, that can monitor secret space program activities because there's also a planetary corporation's base on Pluto that has the Lazarus Project, which allows time traveling with the mind. It's a program that is connected to hollow visors, that is connected to holographic technology, where a person's mind is amplified and they can travel backwards in time to see events. They're not actually going physically time traveling, but with this chronovisor type technology, I'm calling it loosely the chronovisor, because that's a, another project that was done that's a precursor to the Lazarus project. But this is a visor-like holographic technology as well that allows you to project your mind to see events from the past, the present, the near future, and the future itself, the more distant future, to see events as they're going to happen. And this visor holographic technology records everything that you're seeing. A lot of the precogs, psychics who have precognition, who can see the future events, they were experimented on on Pluto by Planetary Corp. I was one of those people. I ended up on Pluto and I saw this Planetary Corporation space. So Pluto is a planet that has a lot of cloud cover and a lot of gaseous things in the atmosphere. So it's very thick. You can't really see what's on the surface of Pluto. It has a rocky base at the bottom and then underground it has the Anunnaki base with three buildings, three structures covered by separate domes to keep the toxins out that are in the atmosphere and to keep the radiation out. Even though that base is underground, it's heavily protected by domes and shielded to keep what's in Pluto's atmosphere out of the base. So Planetary Corp base also has dome structures, is underground, deeply underground, because it's a research facility and planetary corporations does not trust the Anunnaki because they don't want the Anunnaki monitoring what planetary corp is doing on Pluto. So that Anunnaki base has been on Pluto for 1000 years from what I could see from the remote viewing and they have 12 satellites, 12, that monitor ET traffic that comes in into our solar system that comes in and out. They monitor SSP activities on Pluto, Mars, the Moon, and other places. So Anunnaki base monitors the SSP, and the SSP on Pluto does not want the Anunnaki knowing what they're doing. 
This is what I saw in the remote viewing. There's about 300 Anunnaki personnel on the Pluto base. A lot of them have black hair, silver eyes, green eyes. They're up to seven foot tall on the space, the personnel. And the satellites that they have, the 12 satellites, are between Mars, uh, the Moon, Jupiter, Pluto, and the Kuiper Belt. And Nibiru, the planet Nibiru itself, is the tw it's the 12th planet and it's near the Kuiper Belt. It's one of those planets that is hidden. It's nowhere near Saturn at this time. If the, if Nibiru is twice the size of Earth, so if Nibiru was actually close to Saturn at this moment, we would be feeling the impact of planetary orbital shifting. We, we would actually have some physical events happening on Earth. More than what is happening now, we would have physical catastrophic events happening. Anytime Nibiru comes to Earth or near Earth or too close to planets, it has an orbital shift impact on planetary systems. So no, Nibiru is nowhere near Saturn. It is more out there, closer to the Kuiper belt than to any of our 10 planets. So Nibiru is nowhere near us right now. And Nibiru has many beings living on it. Some Anunnaki, Syrians, Nibirians, Lyrans, Syrians, Pleiadians, Andromedans. This planet has been configured to host multiple species in peaceful cohabitation. They have their own living environments, habitats, cities, cultures, councils. So Nibiru is not strictly an Anunnaki holding anymore. The Anunnaki have colonized many different planets. The Anunnaki are Syrians, Niburian, Niburians, as they're called. They're, a lot of them are humanoid looking because they've interbred with human species. Originally, the Anunnaki can be anywhere from eight feet tall to 12 feet. Some of the Anunnaki warriors and workers they could reach up to 36 feet tall. There was different classes of Anunnaki. They're not all the same. Again, the Syrian and the Niborian Anunnaki came here first to Earth, and they had their own experiments going on with energy frequency pyramids. Then the rebel Anunnaki came in, which had the Ea bloodline um, with those ones. And, and they created the rebellion on Earth. They did they did all that genetic experiments with the humanoid primates, and that whole evolution four hundred and fifty thousand years ago. The Anunnaki are still here. The Niborian Anunnaki are still here. They have a base on Pluto. They have twelve satellites. That base was here one thousand for one thousand years, and it's still here. You know, this, this thing about the Anunnaki coming back, that's, that's not a myth, that's not a legend. There's information that this is real. Apparently this is real. They never really left. They're able to monitor us celestially or cosmologically. They have this ability. And they have different branches of Anunnaki. This is something that is happening in our history and it has in repeated cycles. They've come and gone. They've left Earth, come back, left, and their able Anunnaki are very telepathic. They're able to communicate with different humanoid species through crystals, through diamonds, through rubies. It's actually a tele... It's a, like a telepathic communication pathway. They mine for diamonds. They mine for rubies, not just gold. So they, they were here for different things. They use diamonds and rubies in crowns 
and other things in jewelry, and it would boost humanoid telepathic communication with the Anunnaki connection. That's something else I learned recently. It's very interesting what uh, the Anunnaki are in the history. There's a plethora of historical events that I've been researching. I've been taking a deep dive into Anunnaki history, the various Anunnaki beings and, and the historical events that happen on Earth and in space. This research continues and, and I just took a look at Pluto recently to see if what Barbara Marciniak, what the Pleiadians were channeling, if there's any truth or fact to that, and there is. Apparently there's a base on Pluto run by the Niborean Anunnaki. Another component to the Lazarus project is the ability for reanimating the dead. The body's cellular genetic makeup can be revived. So the cells, the tissues, the DNA, that can all be revived. If all the parts of the body are there, it can be regenerated and the body can be brought back to life and the soul of the person can be tethered back to the body if the soul has not been out of the body for like more than 24 hours. So this Lazarus technology allows for soul retethering back into the body, fully regenerating the body and bringing somebody literally back from the dead. That's how advanced this technology is. And that's what the experiments were being done on Pluto. Other than the psychic component of the time travel, also bringing people back from the dead. And there's actually a show called The Lazarus Project that was put out this year. So this is not surprising that this kind of technology actually exists because it does, and it was first experimented on on Pluto, on Planetary Corp Base. And I got, I only got to see the time travel component of the Lazarus Project. I did not get to see the laboratory part where they were bringing people back from the dead. Necrosis isn't really my thing. I'm not interested in that. Although I'm interested in regenerative medicine, I don't want to be bringing people back from the dead. That is not my thing. I don't want to be connected to Neuralink implants anymore. I don't want to be connected to anything that Planetary Corp experiments on in their cybernetics labs and the Lazarus Project or anything else they do. With that stuff, I am not associated with that and have not for the longest time. Although I did work in the cybernetics labs, I did do the 60 and back on Mars. I acknowledge that, but currently I'm not connected to any of that. I have been out from the SSP for a while, so I just, I'm just sharing what I have from recalled memories and hypnosis sessions. Thank you so much and namaste.